Hey guys, how is it going? It is Mike here from Ad Badger, and every episode of the PVC Den podcast is a special episode. This one is a little extra special uh, as I invite to the show my dear friend Kiri Masters, uh, who I've known for t- probably about six years now. We started off in a business mastermind talking about growth of our own companies, and we still talk to this day. So it's a fantastic conversation. I hope you enjoy it. We talk about how to turn our organizations and turn your organization into a learning organization, one that allows you to stay on top of all the Amazon trends so that you always use the latest and greatest techniques and strategies. I'm sure you will enjoy it. Have a good one. Hey, Kiri, this topic of staying uh, on the cutting edge, staying ahead of the curve, both for ourselves, uh, our recommendations so that other companies can do it, is a topic that I think of a lot. Uh, and I think it's a great topic and I'm excited to talk about it with you today. Yeah, me too. There's so much to dive into here because I think each of us on our own are sort of polymaths, at least of uh, the marketplace and Amazon world. So we love to learn all this stuff, but then there's, you know, what what each of us do is so much bigger than just Kiri and Michael. Um, there's a whole ecosystem of, of people and experts around us that rely on staying on top of this information to do their jobs for our customers and clients. So we'll try and bring it, I think talking about what each of us, our own personal um, processes are and tools and things like that and, and sources of information will be good. And then bringing it back to the listener in terms of, well, you know, what is going to work for you? What are some ideas there? Yeah. And, you know, it's so interesting too, in an industry like e-commerce, Amazon, it changes so, so, so quickly. It, It sometimes it seems like every day there's a new thing to learn. And I, I think that's one of the first things that are so, is so important here is really developing that learner's mindset in Mm. this arena. Um, and really instilling that learner's mindset to everyone on the team and everyone that, you know, is working on marketing campaigns in this space. Um, Cause it really does seem to change rapidly. Um, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure we've all met the people that, you know, they have 10 years experience, but in actuality, they repeated the same year 10 times as opposed to compounding that learning over time. So it really is important to actually formally specify, you know, what is our organization's learning methodology and how do we stay on top of things? It's Mm. something that I've thought about a lot. Um, So I think it'd be curious, you know, I'm, I'm very curious on how you personally, Kiri, you know, stay on top of it, you know, as the leader of the company, set that tone for the rest of your team. Yeah, it's, um, I'll be the first to put my hand up and say, I don't know everything that's going on and I spend, um, personally, a, at least a quarter of my time tr- keeping up to date with what's going on in the industry, in the larger industry. So in the grocery industry, in the traditional retail industry, what's going on with the marketplaces that we support, Amazon, Walmart, and uh, Instacart now. Um, so just keeping up with the news, like you said, every week is, is a challenge. I spend a lot of my own time doing that so I can develop a point of view around that. Uh, and then I think, you know, separate to that is how does the rest of the team, how do we stay on top of that as a company? So I'll separate those two things out. Uh, I do it, create a lot of content. And part of that is for selfish purposes, because I find that I really clarify my own point of view about a trend or a news item, something like that, when I write about it. It's a real forcing function to figure out there's this piece of news. What does that mean for a retail brand? And that's the filter. We put everything through that we develop at bobsled really is, you know, this night, this new feature um, on, for example, on Amazon DSP, as of last week, you can now target an audience around what type of 
videos they've like watched on one. Prime mm -hmm. Video recently by like director, producer, genre, things like that. And it's like, well, that's really interesting and, and pretty cool that that's technically possible and that's now a um, targeting option. But what does this mean? Like how, how is a rec, mm -hmm. how is a brand going to use that feature and actually talking through that? So that's, that's the critical piece there. Um, otherwise, whatever you learn is going to be irrelevant unless you can tie things back to what does this, how is a brand going to take this information and use it to grow their sales, protect their brand, become more efficient? Yeah. It, it's awesome that you're connecting those dots. And, you know, as I think of my own learning methodology, it, it really is, you know, a, I am a dot connector. I'm looking at something that's brand new. Uh, I'm looking at the camp, the campaigns that we're managing. I'm thinking of a way to talk about it with the team. I'm thinking about the way that it's going to value uh, that is going to add value to the customers. And my job is to view these things with this lens of how do we systematize this? Like, how do we make this a really efficient process? What does effectiveness look like when we do this? How do we explain it to our customers? Um, why should they do this new initiative? And really connecting those dots is, you know, similar to what you said, part of what I'm doing when I'm doing something new or learning something new I'm viewing it through that lens of that sort of teacher's mindset of, hey, I'm going to have to go explain this later to somebody on sales. I'm going to have to go explain this to, you know, the systems team to create a system around this. Uh, I'm going to want to go into our optimization meeting uh, prepared with, you know, how we can implement this and, you know, all the other dozens and dozens of things that we do to optimize a campaign. So really the the act of sitting down and and planning out the 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 content to later explain this to an audience you know to me sort of the professional development of learning something new and creating content it's very tightly knit it's very close together so when we're sitting down and we're asking ourselves like what's working now like what's brand new you know how do we refine this particular topic to explain it on a podcast that's where yeah. some of the the biggest learning actually happens yeah. And I think actually to tie this back to the listener who's mo most likely an e-commerce director or someone involved in the trenches of, of uh, representing a brand online for, uh, for a brand, lots of different hats to wear. Uh, one, I think you can bring this back to your own company as well and take the initiative of sharing a quick de weekly debrief or a monthly debrief of this is what's, what happened on marketplaces. Here are some new tools and features that we're experimenting with. And I think that that will really force that function of distilling. Here's the trends. Here's how we think. Here's our point of view. Here's some action that we're taking. Uh, one example I've seen um, from Jim Morgan, who's the director of e-commerce at Vitacoco and some sister brands, um, huge polymath as well. And I saw a note that um, he shares with his team, uh, his wider marketing and, and digital team every week, like here's, here's the news, here's what we're doing about it, here's the point of view. So I think it's a, uh, I think you're going to look pretty good um, in your organization if you take that, that role on as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's so important to have that leading philosophy to mm -hmm. connect, you know, the, the fabric that connects everything. Uh, like that leading philosophy is a really great lens. And, and sometimes I see, I'll see, you know, marketing managers that almost approach the news of the week, uh, perhaps, you know, quite frantically where something will come up and because they haven't developed that internal lens at which, and that, that guiding light, that, that North star philosophy to filter things, you know, is this going to be valuable for us or should we uh, wait on this particular strategy uh, and mm -hmm. or technique, those kinds of things can be immensely valuable. Um, yes. Yeah. So for sure. So an, another thing that um, I do occasionally, a, a, a disclaimer, nine times out of 10, I don't do this, but one in 10 times, I do accept a pitch by a, a software tool or a solution provider out there who's um, hunted me down. <laughs> 
you know, I, I get I get tons of pictures. I'm sure you do, mm-hmm. Michael. I'm sure everyone listening to this show does. If you have e-commerce in your um, job title, mm-hmm. then you're getting pitched all the time. But sometimes, sometimes this can be a useful exercise to uh, keep a finger on the pulse. Right now, we're not going to conferences and events and, and mingling and getting to meet different solution providers. It is a great way to find out what's going on in the industry and, and hear a sales pitch. Mm-hmm. Um, why is this important? Who would find this important? Uh, what type of what type of brand? What type of persona there? And um, and sometimes it, it it really opens your eyes to a potential opportunity there as well. So, you know, have, to carve some time out, speak, take some sales calls. I think if you go in with a a learning mindset, it can actually be really helpful. Mm-hmm. It's really funny that you mentioned that. Um, occasionally, we will get a sales pitch for some tool. And when it lands in our sort of group inbox, uh, I'll often grab it from the group inbox and I'll reply to it and say, hey, I'm the CEO of AdBadger. Can I talk to your CEO? Like, I'd love to like have a conversation about, mm. you know, g- let's get to know each other a little bit better. And that is where I form some of the best connections and some of the like, the coolest, most interesting relationships because it's not something that happens a lot to that cold uh, email. And I've had some of the most interesting and insightful conversations about, uh, you know, software strategy and, you know, why they're building the tool the way that they are and uh, what their philosophy is on, you know, how to use software to better run Amazon marketing campaigns. So mm. I think there's such interesting value there. So I, I definitely say, uh, you know, get to know those salespeople and like see if you can really tap into what it is that you know, they are all about. Uh, And then I think again, you know, having that like guiding philosophy of knowing like, hey, I'm going in and, you know, be transparent. You know, you wouldn't want to waste a salesperson time. But at the same time, there's so much interesting, I I almost go into it as if it were, you know, a networking event uh, where Mm -hmm. if I I were to meet them at a conference, I'd be asking them the same similar types of questions. And who knows, maybe one day I'll become a customer of theirs. But for the most part, I think that's an incredible networking opportunity uh, if it's a yeah. well-targeted message. Oh, that's good. That's, that's a good hack. Thanks for sharing that. Yes. <laughs> Another um, great source of learnings and lessons, and, and this is sort of more insider information, but this is around creating a peer group or joining a formal peer group. Mm -hmm. So I was, as an example, I was invited to um, a group called the Digital Shelf Institute, which is uh, run by Salsify. And this is a group of retail executives that behind, you know, under the cloak of confidentiality Mm -hmm. and there's a, you know, there's some, you know, rules around this, but we share pretty candidly some issues, benchmarking, wins, things like that for the benefit of the greater group. And then we sort of conduct these joint investigations. I'm doing one right now about e-commerce profitability, which is a hot topic that um, people are really curious about, but getting some sense of benchmarks in that, for that topic is really challenging because it's very confidential information. So if we're able to share and anonymize this and, and bring some lessons back to the group, that's great and encourage people to find some kind of group that's small, um, you know, the right level of people you want to be joined, joining with a group where you've got peers either by company size or uh, industry, something like that, where you can candidly share. There's a culture of sharing and get something back from people and, you know, you need to give before you get obviously, but those those peer groups can be enormously helpful. Mm -hmm. Throughout my career, uh, I found almost everyone will say yes to this because everyone wants exactly what you just described. They want an intimate place to share, uh, to be able to ask questions and not be judged to have, you know, a private place to learn. Um, So sort of throughout my career uh, at one point, or another, I've been in sort of these rotating masterminds uh, where just reaching out to other executives and, you know, if you were to go to them and say, hey, we're going to meet 
on the phone for you know once a month, twice a month, and share our you know one challenge and one thing that's working really well. And we're going to brainstorm and workshop the challenge, and we're all going to learn from each other's wins. That's an incredibly valuable experience. And then in between the meetings, uh, anytime we have issues, we're going to be able to jump over them faster together. Peer groups, incredibly valuable. Um, a great skill of an executive should be networking and being able to network in a productive way to jump over mm. hurdles faster together, to to share, to grow together. Incredibly valuable. It's like a superpower. Mm. It's it's an absolute superpower, and I and I and I invite people. You know, if they don't know of a community that they can join, um, throw your own party. You know, form your own tribe. Um, I think there's incredible value in that too. Keeping it really intimate. You know, five mm -hmm. other peers like that can be incredibly valuable. So, yeah. it's been an incredible treasure for my career, uh, and if. Someone's listening who is in not not in a peer group. Highly recommended finding one yeah. uh, of your peers. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you and I have sometimes we'll, we'll yep. send a text and hey, what are you doing about this? Or you know, there's something very specific. We're in the same industry, um, and just having someone to bounce ideas yeah. off, even just one to one, has been great. Yeah. So thank it's you for years. being my buddy. Yes, on, thank on you. That. Uh, it's been years <laughs> since we've been exchanging messages and mm -hmm. brainstorming different different ideas. And at one point in time, we were in a formal mastermind together, and that was really yep. delightful. And since then, yep. you know, we've we've kept it up. And if I am struggling with something that I know you'd probably have a lot of experience with, you're you're on my Rolodex. You're on my message list. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, that, that's one thing you, you got to give before you get as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think I originally reached out to you. We were we, we were actually in a bit of entrepreneur community mm -hmm. and I heard you on a podcast, I think, initially. I think that's when I reached out. So, oh, get out. Uh, yeah, right on. that's the backstory. <laughs> okay, it's so long ago. Um, so let's talk about uh, the wider team. Mm -hmm. So we don't operate in a silo. It's not right. just the the Michael show or the Kiri show. <laughs> We've got a whole team of people who it's their jobs also to stay mm -hmm. on top of trends and changes because they're the ones actually in the trenches working with customers, yep. working with clients. So how does, how does your wider team stay up to date with Amazon and marketplace news and trends and changes best practices? Yeah, this is, this is where you get the, you know, exponential growth curve of having a culture of learning uh, where internally uh, you're generating new ideas and you're generating new strategies internally. I think that's where a lot of the magic happens. So for us, a lot of, you know, so we formalized it. We will meet once a week and talk about what's new. Like, what have you noticed that's changing? Uh, what have you tried this week that you haven't tried before and how is it working? Do we think it could work on another customer? That time is incredibly valuable and sort of structuring it in a way where it's just strategy. You know, we're not talking about projects. We're not talking mm -hmm. about particular clients or client issues or anything like that. It's just strategy. And, you know, that sort of strategy hour that we have each week uh, carries over throughout the week. And I think it turns us into a culture of learners. So we have a Slack channel internally that is just for Amazon advertising chat. So if we notice yeah. something, it gets dropped in there. And it's mm -hmm. it's a great way throughout the week to maintain that that pace. And then once a week, we'll dig in deeper. So I have found mm -hmm. that formalizing it and, and almost turning it into a you know, a, a shared seminar. And we've tried all different kinds of formats. Uh, we had, you know, a rotating leader each week where one person shares uh, and then everyone else sort of digs into what that person's sharing. Uh, currently we have a format of, it's, it's just sort of a round table. I really like mm. the structure of, you know, what's one thing new that you noticed? What's one thing that's working well for you right now? And and every once in a while, we'll also do a challenge. Uh, you know, what what challenge mm. do you feel like you need solved right now? I really enjoy that format. And that's something we do once a week. And formalizing mm. it has been really valuable for Ad Badger. 
Oh, that's great. I like that because it's also probably developing some presentation skills on your team yeah. and, you know, getting to the, that skill of getting to the core of why is this important? What does this mean? Is a, is a big one. One, one really interesting piece too is, you know, we have a lot of technical people on the team that, you know, know how to use spreadsheets and optimize large accounts at scale and, you know, all these, all do it really efficiently and effectively. And I have found that everyone can benefit from explaining something to others. So the mm. act of presenting it can be, even if, you know, they, they might not be forward facing on sales calls or anything like that, but being able to synthesize something and explain it to others, I, I feel improves their own personal mastery. So it, it's one of my yeah. favorite, it's one of, it's perhaps one of my favorite hours of the week. That's awesome. I, lo I love that. Mm -hmm. So from, from my side, a few things just to play off at the back of what you said, a couple of things came to mind. One, yeah, we use Slack internally every minute of the day. Right. <laughs> can be a problem. Um, and we've also got a, a news channel where we'll just post in their news changes and, and I try and uh, prompt, you know, if I see a news item, I try and prompt, what does this mean? How are we going to use this? and develop that muscle. Um, and then at the end of every week, currently myself and Stefan, who's our advertising director, we put together a weekly news digest for our clients. We did have that as a paid thing for a while. I think we might just take that away and make it client exclusive, um, where we do a digest of all the stuff that happened that week and what it means for brands. And that's really that distillation process. And I have had, um, some great success with other people contributing to that publication as well. Cause like you said, it's the synthesize, synthesizing what that means. So that can be really powerful. Then we're taking everything basically from that Slack channel and expanding it in some cases for consumption by clients. And so that puts an extra amount yeah. of rigor around and clients will sort of scan that newsletter and find that helpful. Um, and then the other thing that we do internally uh, is we do quarterly reviews for our clients, uh, quarterly strategy reviews. So we start with a blank sheet of paper and say, what happened last quarter? What are the growth opportunities for this quarter? And every client gets, gets that report and it's a full presentation. We try and get as many people from the client side on that call as possible and it's very thorough and just a great piece of um, strategy work. So those quarterly reviews are also peer reviewed by other account managers. So it's not just one person who's thinking about what's going on in this account. There's, there's other managers also coming in there. There's, there's Stefan's coming in there and looking at those as well. So that is a blend between staying on top of the best strategies and you know, what good client delivery looks like for us. But it does help to cross pollinate all these ideas and strategies and techniques that might be working on, on one mm -hmm. account, move that over to the other ones as well in a really systematic way. Yeah. You know, a lifetime ago, I was a teacher and in teaching, there's this thing called Bloom's taxonomy of understanding. Uh, Ooh, and it, what's that? And, and it, it basically, helps you teach something to, to a student where you don't want them just to repeat something. Oh, there's this new strategy or this new technique. And just simply the act of repeating it isn't necessarily enough for you to really know that they have internalized mm. it. So it's a sort of taxonomy of, of sort of understanding a topic where you can just remember, you know, you can repeat it, uh, you can understand what it means. Can you apply it? Can you mm. analyze it? Can you evaluate what's good, what's bad about it? How would you change it? Uh, and then could you take that information and actually create a brand new technique or a new strategy from it? So that sounds like a really great opportunity. Well, what you just described, those quarterly reviews to exercise all of those things because you're, you're recalling the information from the account. Uh, you're talking about what you will do in the future based off that past, you know, the past quarter. Uh, so they're synthesizing something new from that. Um, so really, I think the, the, the act of formalizing the continuous professional development in that way 
is gold for a company. Uh, mm. Having the giving the team the opportunity to present new ideas uh, is absolutely key. Yeah. Well, let's let's bring it home for the listener who is you know not usually part of an agency where everyone is thinking and you know, about the same things right. and doing the same things. Usually, at least for uh, e-commerce brain trust listeners, they're an e-commerce manager or director or some kind of job like that, which is fairly isolated within a, a company. Um, how could we take some of these agency and uh, software company learnings and, and, and allow a, a solo person to apply that within their own company? Right. I think it's, re I mean, not to pat ourselves on the back too much, but finding companies that share the same philosophy Mm -hmm. of sort of things that we just described. Uh, you know, I do think it's fa a fair point uh, when, you know, someone from Ad Badger is on a sales call to field a question like that, to hear a, to, I think it is absolutely fair to have a prospect ask us a question uh, and sort of ask us, you know, what is Ad Badger's education? Like, how does Ad Badger stay on the cutting edge? And mm is there any opportunity for you to share that information with us so that we can better develop our own lens? And those are things that both of our companies do. Uh, you know, both of our companies have a podcast. Uh, both of our companies have a newsletter where we're sharing some of this internal learning with our customers. Um, you know, the quarterly review that you mentioned, that's an opportunity for those companies to stay ahead as well. So I, I do think when companies are evaluating agencies and deciding uh, who to work with, find a company that has education, internal mm -hmm. education, and staying ahead of things as one of their cornerstone philosophies. Um, and again, yeah. not to pat ourselves on the back too much, but I think we're good examples of that. Yeah, it's it's a great point. I think that if it's it's by no means the only metric of choosing a solution provider, mm -hmm. but if a solution provider is is going out to the market and playing a role of educator and being helpful and doing webinars and mm -hmm. and putting themselves out there, then that that information has to come from somewhere. So they're almost guaranteed to have this internal system of um, leveling up all the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, and not to say that companies that don't have a great blog or you know share a lot of content regularly don't know what they're doing, but it's it less of a sure bet than a company that is really active out there doing a lot of short thought thought leadership. Because that I can you know from personal experience, I spend a, at least a quarter of my time doing this. A lot of other people in the company are pulled into that. We mm -hmm. all do it all for our clients, so. It's um, yeah. What you see on the surface is a is a tiny right. slice of all of the 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 effort that has to go into coming up with that point of view. Yeah, I also think it's worth brands um, seeing what the uh, seeing what kind of information they could glean from their partners uh, mm -hmm. as well. Um, you know, we really try to become a trusted advisor, you know, a reliable cog in their marketing machine. And we do, it really does need to be in many ways, a two-way street in the sense of we do our best work when we are up to date on what the client's goals and and the things that they value and, and their philosophies. Uh, and conversely, the experience that we have can help shape some of that philosophy that they're taking on marketing. So mm -hmm. the, the act of relationship building and having that flow of information can be, it's definitely something that some of our most successful brands practice. You know, what can we learn mm -hmm. from our partners and what can we share with our partners that has worked in the past? I think that's really valuable. Super. Well, just to, to recap some of the themes that we've talked about today, uh, one, take the role of a professional researcher. Uh, or in your case, Michael, a, a teacher. That's right. Uh, accept some solicitations, speak with salespeople, take some pictures, or, you know, next level that, that I took away from this actually from you is ask for a top to top with their yeah. uh, CEO or equivalent. Mm -hmm. Super great uh, takeaway there. 
uh, peer groups, join a peer group or start your own. And one-on-one -on -one relationships can be as effective as, as groups. I mean, the group, group dynamics sometimes are challenging. Sometimes it's good to find um, your Michael or Kiri out there and, and have someone to, to bounce things around. And then um, as a wider team, sharing wins, challenges, best practices within your team, or if you don't sort of work on a team where there's other people that do the same thing as you do, lean on your partners and so solution providers to um, provide you with those best practices. Absolutely. Um, thanks so much for sharing all these things, Kiri. I feel like I have now leveled up my own educational practices <laughs> internally, and I know it's going to help our team. So I hope everyone out there listening uh, can go and, and help their team level up because I know that I've learned a lot this episode. Great. Well, I'll, I'll catch you around, Michael. And um, you know, it was good to, good to share this, this podcast out on both of our shows. I think that people will take away a lot from it. That's Thank right. You. Yeah, it's very exciting. Uh, well, until next time, Kiri, have a good one. Yeah.